Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you guys are feeling well out there, having a great start to your day, a great week out there so far. We're about to round it off, make our way into our last weekend of August, and then we're going to enter September uh, next week, which I'm very excited for. I love I love this time of the year, which is the beginning of the best time of the year, in my opinion, once you start to get into September. But anyways, we got you an update on what is happening out there this morning, what's going to happen out there throughout most of the country for the lower 48 and we're also going to give you an update on the tropics. Confidence continues to increase that we're going to have uh, a somewhat of a potentially an active period coming up here in the tropics. The Atlantic Basin looks like it's going to turn up. And we're still watching that Caribbean feature uh, and maybe a couple Caribbean features. There's a, there's a little bit of a mix-ups in the models uh, really overnight. It started showing signs of it last night and yesterday just overall. But we're going to give you an update on what is going on. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider hitting that subscribe button, guys. It goes a long way. Liking the video goes a long way, too. It gets the video out there. Um, you know, this channel has had some steady growth over the last, I would say, 10 days, and I really appreciate people who have tagged along. we got a tight-knit group of people here. I know I reiterate the same things over and over again, and my intros kind of drag on, but I always want to tell you guys how much I appreciate y'all. Y'all give me an audience to talk about something I love, which is the weather. So I really will always want to show you guys appreciation. I never want to leave that aside. Um, social media platforms. Hit me up on Twitter, especially Facebook. If you're not big on either one, I mean, that's cool. Follow along on YouTube, but uh, especially on Twitter. You know, when it gets active, I get very active on there, and I'm very passionate. And we like to have a little bit of fun on there, too. It's not always all serious and everything, and it's straight weather. I talk a little bit of sports, too. No politics, but uh, we definitely have a good time on the social media platforms. All positivity out there, for sure. Uh, if you guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over Pre, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so, too. Let's continue to do that. Uh, water vapor loop. You got a lot of rain falling in areas of the Carolinas this morning in Georgia. I actually mentioned it in yesterday morning's video that, uh, that there could potentially be some rains this morning, and it is definitely verified. Um, I worked out this morning with my, a group of guys that meet out here at the elementary school. Um, really close to my house, and uh, it rained on us the entire 45 minutes of working out, so I'm still pretty soaked. Um, but uh, it was a nice workout. But anyways, uh, it's definitely rainy out there, and we just still have this uh, stalled frontal uh, boundary interaction down here that actually caused a spin-up in Mississippi, and it caused a record amount of rain in Mississippi. A lot of flood rescues had to be done in areas of Mississippi, kind of similar to what happened in Dallas-Fort Worth area three, three days ago. So let's hope that that's not a reoccurring thing today, but Storm Prediction Center, not a very active day. You got a couple splotches up here in Montana. Watch out for some strong, severe storms. And then this area right here in Wyoming and South, um, I almost said South America and South Dakota. So might be some severe storms. I think tomorrow will be a pretty active weather day in the Northeast. We'll talk about that tomorrow morning. But we could see some severe storms in the interior Northeast tomorrow. We'll talk about that, like I said, tomorrow morning. But Flash flooding risk. There is no moderate risk up right now. This could upgrade here in the coming hours after I drop this video, but you got a slight risk of flash flood guidance being met. That is at least a 15% risk. And, you know, we're probably going to get some rains in these areas, but if we're going off the latest model guidance, which I'm about to show you guys, it does not look as widespread as yesterday, not even close. Watches and warnings, flood watches down here, um, and then you've got flood warnings ongoing just due to the overflowing banks of these rivers. So anybody who lives closer to these rivers need to be aware of flooding risk for sure. Um, the uh, National Hurricane Center update, per the 2 a.m. update, another update will drop here in about 30, 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets bumped up to a 30% risk sometime today. I would not be surprised whatsoever. Um, but if it doesn't, I wouldn't be surprised either because I think development with uh, this wave right here, that first wave that we were talking about a few days ago, has diminished. So we, there's no point in calling it a first wave anymore because it doesn't exist. So there's two waves now. There's this first wave right here, and then there's another, another wave that's going to come off the coast of North Africa. Both have some pretty good support of development on down the road and have had good support for the last several days. And we're still watching the Caribbean feature. What's interesting about this is this could develop. But this could kind of push into Central America, and then another dominant vortice may form. And uh, the GFS actually shows this scenario, and there actually could be a feature that doesn't really have anything to do with this that could develop. But we'll talk a little bit about that on this in this video. We'll break that down, uh, you know, much more detail tonight. But 
What's going on in the, uh, the southeast right now? You look at the late radar, some widespread rains. If you're in Augusta, even Atlanta to Augusta to Columbia, a very wet morning commute is certainly out there. Uh, just a steady rain, not, not really any strong to severe storms out there really at all. Just a steady, moderate to sometimes maybe heavy rain. So just be aware of that and the HRRR model verifying very well on this. It really is. And this will continue probably diminish in the early afternoon hours and then maybe the atmosphere recovers and you'll get some isolated pop-up showers and storms. But certainly down here in the panhandle of Florida, uh, southern areas of Alabama, southern Mississippi, southeast Louisiana, and even watch out that these areas that's already seen a ton of rain in Louisiana and Mississippi expect some more tropical downpours to form later today. But all these will be slow moving. There's not much movement to these. Some of them are moving more than others. You got the uh, tropical downpours all throughout the peninsula of Florida. Uh, but, you know, if you're in this little area right into here, you're certainly going to see probably some a decent chance of rain today. But ever here in Mississippi, let's hope you guys don't get a lot of rain. But I'm expecting widespread showers and storms. I just don't think it's going to be quite as bad as yesterday. But please, if you're in the, anywhere in Louisiana, if you're in the southern half of Mississippi, and even in these southern sections of these Gulf states and also in the Panhandle of Florida, be aware of flooding today. It's certainly going to be possible. The northeast, uh, pretty quiet. I certainly think you're going to have some showers, maybe a storm or two in Michigan a little bit later this afternoon. Some of this might drift into the interior areas of the northeast in the, way, in the form of some showers and storms, especially the down east areas of Maine could certainly have some storm activity and maybe an isolated storm or two in areas of uh, West Virginia and northern VA. Outside of that, not expecting much activity. Uh, this is going to be probably a different story tomorrow as I'm expecting some severe storms in the northeast. Down here in the south central U.S., you got all your rain one day. Um, and, you know, I don't see much widespread showers and storms today. You know, we already talked about Louisiana. We're going to see that. Uh, Texas, I think you'll see probably your highest chance of rain in the deep areas of Texas, probably the southern sections. San Antonio, maybe a storm or two. Corpus Christi, uh, some storms. Um, are certainly possible. Maybe Brownsville, Texas, some storms down here today. But other than that, maybe some isolated downpours around the Houston area. Up Dallas, Fort Worth, maybe some very isolated showers. But um, I don't think y'all are going to get much rain today up there in that region. North Central U.S., you're dealing with some rain in Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan. This will continue to drift into Michigan. And then more, some more storms will redevelop around the surface low right here. The probably will enhance some severe storms in the northeast tomorrow so we'll watch for some strong maybe a strong storm or two as possible but in general some isolated um, storms in the Great Lakes region and the western areas of the Ohio Valley are certainly possible in and around the Chicago area but uh, not, not, like I said not, not a big deal temperatures today held down in the southeast due to rain fall out you know Columbia South Carolina Atlanta you guys will struggle to get to 80 degrees today it all depends on if you get a break in the clouds, which I highly doubt it, especially over here in South Carolina. The heart of the country will warm up into the 90s, some of the warmest temperatures we've seen in several days. But luckily, it's not over 100 degrees, and it's just not that bad. But, you know, pretty warm along the mid-Atlantic uh, areas, uh, you know, of the Delmarva area, Virginia, New Jersey. An isolated area will hit 90 degrees a day, pretty warm. Cooler temperatures in the Midwest and the Northern Plains. Uh, but, you know, not overly hot or, 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 you know, very cool anywhere. Let's talk, take a look at the Atlantic Basin. So what you see out here is, honestly, my eyes immediately go to this. You're thinking, well, dang, is this a developing tropical system? It's not. This is actually not really a tropical wave, a feature that's really been mentioned. But it certainly is popping off a lot of convection. But this is just kind of part of the monsoon trough out here. Not a whole lot going on with it. But this actually... It's something we watch. We'll watch to see if we can get in some development of convection today. But this is that tropical wave right here. And then this is the first tropical wave that shows signs that we could have some development with it. But overall, you know, as of right now, not a whole lot going on. We'll look at the latest GFS and uh, we'll get this moving here in time. We'll start off by this Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, here comes and let's back it up here. The latest GFS doesn't like the idea of this first wave developing much right here. Now it did, but it's going to enter probably a little bit of an unfavorable environment in the central main development region. But here comes this second wave, which kind of shoots off the coast of North Africa, you know, like a rocket. Um, this really develops here, you know, but it just kind of gets kind of trapped in some steering currents and uh, it, it, it's, it never really kind of gets any forward motion to it. 
it's kind of a weird weird run by the GFS. But you know, your eyes immediately go to this too right here. The main tropical uh, wave actually, by the time you get to the later half of the weekend, actually kind of scoots and moves into Central America. There it is right there. But then another vortice kind of develops right here just south of Cuba around Jamaica around uh, midway next week and then gets into your Labor Day weekend, develops into a tropical storm off the western tip of Cuba, gets into the Gulf of Mexico, and then quickly strengthens into a powerful hurricane and heads towards a Texas for your Labor Day. But, you know, that's uh, 12, 13 days out. Very unreliable. But what you take from this, and I'll continue to say this and I'll say it tonight, is anything that sneaks into the Gulf of Mexico is, is not good news. If anything survives the Caribbean, so survives land interaction, becomes a dominant vortice, um, if it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, you got, uh, you're not going to have a lot of shear, you're not going to have a ton of dry air, and you certainly are going to have rocket fuel as far as sea surface temperatures. Um, it's just the time of the year. It happens. It seems like it's happened uh, multiple times just over the last two years, the last three years. So it just tells you if anything gets out there, we certainly need to watch out. We do. Um, the European, which only goes 10 days out, uh, here's the set first wave. We're not going to call that the other wave the first wave anymore because it's gone. So here comes that first wave. All right. Uh, modest development just maintains a weak tropical wave as we're getting into uh, this coming Sunday evening. Notice not good, nothing really going on with the Caribbean feature. It doesn't do really what the GFS does with a secondary feature. Um, but here comes the second storm right here. So therefore, you got two tropical waves out in the main development region, one in the central, one in the eastern. And uh, the European flirts with the idea of trying developing, trying to develop some kind of feature off another vortice that has nothing to do with the other feature um, that's moving into the Caribbean right now. But look what the look what the European does by the time you get into your Labor Day weekend with that first tropical wave. Starts to strengthen it into a tropical storm, and I would argue that it's a borderline hurricane in the northern Lesser Antilles right here. And then the third wave doesn't do much with it. So the European does something with that second wave, and I would argue that the European has done something with that, I meant with the first wave. The European has done something with this first wave for the last several ones and the second wave. Just It's just kind of going back and forth of which one you think it's going, it thinks it's going to be more of the dominant uh, storm. You know, maybe both are, maybe both aren't. The latest icon goes out to 120 hours out. We'll just skip to that frame. And... You know, this takes us all the way into almost around Tuesday morning, August the 30th of next week. It shows some energy right here in the Caribbean, but, but what's going on? We don't know. But it shows two features in the main development region, only 120 hours out. It's not very far. We're Thursday. This is this coming Tuesday. Um, this is, you know, definitely right in the medium range. So I would say, I would take from this that, hey, we're starting to inch into the medium range with these two features. Now, we're not going to know a whole lot about this second tropical wave until it splashes down into the Atlantic. But I would say all models like the idea of, of some kind of feature out here. So you look at the European ensembles, this only takes us 180 hours out. There's really no point showing any further than that. So this takes us through literally one week out to right now, but one week from now. Strong signal for the second wave, strong signal now that's done nothing but either stay the same or either grow over the last few days of this first wave. And some of these members are pretty strong. And then there's still something showing up in the Caribbean. Now, if you go 100, 200, 240 hours out, guys, um, it shows this second, this first wave. I got to quit calling this uh, second wave, well, this first wave, second wave now. Um, but that's actually the signature off that first wave right here. <laughs> but anyways, um, it shows this first wave that's, by the way, in the, in, in the Atlantic now. Some of these members show a pretty strong system, tropical storm, hurricane status. And then, like I said, anything that does sneak in the Gulf of Mexico, you got some stronger members out of the 50 members uh, showing up in the Gulf of Mexico. So it, I think active times are ahead, guys. I really do. So stay tuned. Extensive breakdown of this tonight. We'll go down. I think it'll be an interesting uh, next 12 hours of model runs. I really do think it will. Um, so stay tuned tonight. And I'll give you an update. God bless all y'all. Have a great Thursday, and I'll talk to you soon.